the suspense. Built the suspense there. Built the suspense. So, you know, I like the long crack. I never go. I never go quick. You're you're a quick cracker. You get. You might get a little more bass than yours. <laughs> I am a quick cracker. <laughs> that was too long. That's too long. Too much. Too much suspense built. Five one. Didn't. There wasn't a good bridge in there. Mm-mm. Hmm. Yeah. It was too Five long. one. Oh, we got Christian Hackenberg over here. He <laughs> wasted his pop. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. This is this is the fine sultry voice of Matt. If you didn't catch us on the intro here. He wasted his credit. What did you think? Of, what did you think of his pop? What did you think of Jay Wayne's pop? I didn't give it yet. Oh, that was a good one. I give it a seven point two. Ooh, whoa, that's a strong. I score. got a five one, and that was a seven. T- I thought I really built something up there. Yeah, too much anticipation. All right. Hmm. All right. Well, what's your score for uh, Sir Casey here? Six point two. I'll take Not it. terrible, but I'll take well, it. Well, as long as I win. I'm I haven't really got it down on air. When I'm off air, I'm just <laughs> good cracks all over the place the, the, on air. The crack, the crack daddy of Charleston County. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. going pops. We're the pop daddy. The pop, the, the king of pops. Hmm. It's already taken here too. It's right. a solid popsicle. Well, let's get down to brass taxes here. We got a we got a a, a Penn State aficionado in, amongst our uh, connoisseur <laughs> amongst our. Um, Presence? Presence, I suppose. Presence. He's in our dwelling. All right. So we're here to do Miles Sanders today. Not talk about Qualcomm. Um, 5'11", 211. Official height and weight. Ding. <laughs> Indubitably. <laughs> uh, 449 at the combine. Ooh. Solid. 20 bench reps. Yeah. Also decent. 36 vertical. Love it. 124 broad. Respectable. And then the, the you know the the one that really brought it home for everyone the six point eight nine three cone drill, love it. Mm. Uh, no, that's two people doing the military press. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little sex and weightlifting. Jeez. You remember that from Adam Sandler? What at least two people working out <laughs> or having sex? <laughs> I didn't get the reference. Oh, I did not get it's it. It's so either. good. Give me the Google drop. <laughs> you can Google it. It's worth a Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, obviously impressed with the combine numbers here. Super expected the combine numbers. Not impressed, expected. Maybe, maybe for you, sir. But for <laughs> most, it was a, uh, it was something a lot, beforehand. A lot of people talking about maybe doesn't have the top end speed, wasn't super athletic, all this other stuff. I would disagree with that. I read something that said he had no organic explosion. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that sounds a bit personal. That sounds like it could have been a porno I'm review. Pretty sure that was in the Roto World blur. So they were quoting someone saying, uh, "Was that Peter North?" <laughs> that was a that was a strong <laughs> reference. Strong reference there. It's a good comp. For well, her. if if Miles Sanders was a porn star, he would be Peter North because he was the number one recruit out of high school. He was. I don't know if Peter North is the number one recruit, but <laughs> I was really anxious to see how much you do about <laughs> Peter North. <laughs> He had a strong run there, at least when I was growing up. I think he's still around. Uh, yeah, he's got to be around. Those guys never go away. <laughs> Why would you hang him up? It's true. Hang it up. <laughs> I don't think you can hang that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's hung. <laughs> it's All right, we've gone too far. <laughs> All right, Mister Penn State, you you got any any uh, fun facts about um, Miles Sanders for us? Pretty Eagle Scout. Anything, anything fun? <laughs> his, twi- his, his Twitter handle is Booby Miles. All right. So he likes the movie Friday Night Lights. Is that accurate, or did you just make that up? Well, I mean, he's got he's he's had to have seen at least once. I mean, <laughs> Booby Miles. I mean, he was the he was he was it for Permian football. That's true. That is true. All right. So Penn State, the offense is, I presumably what I've come to. Uh, believe is is built on rpos would you say that's false or unfalse that is very unfalse very unfalse yes so the truth the truth. two double the negatives make it positive i guess would you say that penn state's line was better or worse this year so it was a bit the of same a, it was a bit of a mixed bag um i would say they definitely improved in the run blocking sense but pass blocking they were more of the same so i would say that sanders definitely benefited from a bit of an improved run blocking line but i wouldn't say it was like a huge run blocking line okay any standouts from said line that you're excited about maybe this year or next year moving uh, to the next level? they have a guard connor mcgovern who should be a top five guard but 
this is a weak guard class, so I wouldn't take too much stock in that. Okay, I, I recall that name from last year. Was was well? There's another Conor McGovern too. Oh, okay. he went to Missouri. Oh, plays okay. with the Broncos. So there's two right. Conor McGoverns who play offensive line. So this is a lot of double names. You may have names. gotten them. You may have may, gotten I've, them confused. I may have. Um, I guess the next question would be: Do you think that there was a big difference in the offensive weapons around Miles Sanders to either benefit or affect him negatively? Yes, that is a hundred percent sure. Um, Which way? Negatively. Uh, lacking of weapons. Then. Lacking of weapons is accurate because of um, Penn State lost. Obviously, they lost Barkley last year, but we're not talking about Barkley. Because that helps him. So yes. We, yeah, that helps Sanders. Yes, correct. Well, he didn't have any production. Well, I mean, minimally, but yes. Barkley was there. What are you going to do? Yeah. So Barkley leaving, um, Mike Kosicki leaving, huge weapon at tight end. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Hamilton leaving, who was the number one wide receiver there. And... The, the the upper class and wide receivers just didn't produce like many had thought. I know Jawan Johnson was someone who the Devi community really was a fan of, and he just kind shat the bed this year. So but he was fighting injuries all year, so he transferred to Oregon now. So, but they had a couple of underclassmen step up. They have a, another couple of underclassmen coming in, so should be an interesting class coming in next year. But we're talking about Sanders here, so yes, right. I would say that the I would say that the the offensive weapons around Sanders were was a definitely a negative between the uh, up against the year before. So not no, nobody to really that anybody was fearful of taking any pressure off eh, Sanders. K yeah, not really. I mean, KJ Hamler had a couple good games. He definitely was definitely was the standout of the wide receiver class this year. Little shifty, probably five ten, five eleven guy. He, he he can stretch the field a little bit, but there was no there was no Hamilton, there was no Godwin, there was no Al, uh, Allen Robinson, n no like definitive number one guy. Gotcha. So, so a little bit better line, worse weapons. Um, would you say the RPO game benefited uh, Sanders? Was it a good fit? The the kind of scheme that they were running for him? Yeah, or? I would say it was definitely a good fit. I definitely I definitely think they ran a more of a zone. They probably ran more of a zone concept with the RPOs. Um, definitely the loss of Joe Moorhead was definitely big for them because which is their offensive yes coordinator. their offensive coordinator from 2017 he went to uh, head coach at Mississippi State so um, Ricky Ronnie came in and he made some interesting calls I'm sure some Penn State Ohio State fans out there remember the fourth and five call in the run up the middle to end the game against Ohio State which was brutal for Penn State fans because what are you doing running the ball fourth and five? Was that his call, or do you think McSorley out of the RPO kind of? No, that was a straight. No, that was no, that was a straight run. That okay. was a straight run. There was no RPO to that. That was a. That wasn't a McSorley decision. No, I know he gets a lot of the kind of free roam to do what he wants. I didn't know if maybe he saw a numbers game and went for it. No, but even a numbers game. I mean, even with Bosa out, Chase Young was killing them all game. Ohio State probably had the second best defensive line in the country. Uh, you just can't run the ball. And McSorley was killing Ohio State with his legs and with his arms. So th that was definitely a straight run with Sanders. It just made no sense. They tried to get cute with it, and it panned out negatively. Okay, so decline in the play calling? Yes, for sure. Okay. So let's get into what, what you think Miles Sanders did well and, and didn't do well. What what would what are your favorite things about Miles Sanders that, that puts you maybe a little higher than most, especially before the combine and... and and how you feel right now? Like, what what is this best attributes that that elevate him to, for you? I think he does a lot of things well. I think he ha he's great agility. He can beat guys in a phone booth. Um, he can make you miss with power. He can make you miss with agility. Um, clearly, we saw he had the speed with running a four four nine. Was one of the top ten fastest running backs in this class. Obviously, it's a down class against maybe some class we've seen in the last two to three years. But nonetheless. Um, he 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 does a pretty good job of picking up blitzers in the in the uh, the passing game. Um, I just don't see a lot of negative his in, in his game. He does a lot of things really well. I know a lot of the metric guys are saying yes he um, yes yes he had a um uh, <laughs> he had a an old breakout age but oh he, well but that doesn't matter for running backs or does it doesn't matter for running backs. We had this conversation. Well, I know the college dominator doesn't matter. No, breakout age, negative breakout age, breakout age, call breakout age college dominator. Scrap it for running backs. Just scrap it. Bummer. Throw away everything you thought you knew. Yep. Scrap it. The running backs is definitely the most film heavy position of the offensive skill positions because I mean Sanders was only produced for one year. You you, you can't 
you can't knock him for being behind Saquon Barkley. Sure. That's just that would be unfathomable. He's been the best running back we've seen come out of college in the last I don't know how many years. He's he's generational generational talent. Yes, right, that's I know exactly. People get upset about that. How can there be one of those every year? That's for real, for real with Saquon. Yeah, I mean the guy can do it all. I mean he caught fifty four passes. He can in four, one four. year. Yeah, fifty four passes one year. Four four at two hundred thirty pounds. I mean that's just yeah un- unheard of. So a, a a positive to come out of being behind Saquon for that long is the low mileage exactly on, on um Miles Sanders here. Um, I th- I think for me. I would like to see Miles Sanders come back for another year. Yes, I agree with that. But I think the thing that he looked at is he saw the 2020 running back class and he was like, I'm going to get lost in the shuffle. I think that's that's fair. I mean, for, it's a selfish reason for me. And I, and I think it would be good for him uh, to develop another year. But I, I think that's fair. You got to try to plant your flag on your stock as high as you possibly can in this this class gives him a decent chance, especially after he tested so well, definitely opened some eyes. What do you what do you think about Miles Sanders, Jay Wayne? I know you're probably the lowest of the three. So I have a good question: to hurdle or not to hurdle? Ugh. I mean, is he is he the worst hurdler in this class? No, he's not the worst <laughs> hurdler. He's not the worst hurdler. He's just the, he the almost most broke ag- his neck on he's one the of mo- those. Yes, he, that's absolutely true. Oh, he's scary. the most aggressive hurdler in this. Turns class. Turns to the hurdle too often. Yes, hurdle the turtle. But and, he's fast. And a, a fumbling issue would probably be one of the other big knocks on of, him. Yes, he tied in this class. He tied in 2018 amongst running backs with fumbles. But do you know the guy who he tied with? I do not. Montgomery? It, no, no, it was, Montgomery is pretty good. No, it was one Jonathan Taylor, oh. who is a top yeah, three running back sure. for the running back class next year. A lot year. of reps so, for him, though. A lot of reps for Sanders. For, yeah. A lot of reps. I mean, I think I think uh, Jonathan Taylor had some damn near 300. Yeah. Oh, prop. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, Miles that, Sanders at two hundred and twenty. It's not. It's, 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 so that's, that's a lot. It's a strong number. So I, I agree with with some of the things that you said, uh, <clears throat> Matt. Like, I think he's definitely athletic. He looks twitchy. You know, I disagreed with the organic explosion when I read it, and that was before the combine. Uh, when I first started watching this guy, I was like, "Whoa, this dude is ridiculous!" And I realized that there was highlight tape of each individual game or of like some of them. I didn't realize I was just like thought it was like awesome how short these videos were <laughs> and how good every run was. Right. I'm like, yeah. this dude is awesome. I see why people like him. And then I realized those, that's the highlight tape, right? Which a Jay, lot of people's highlight. Jay Wayne tape called good. me and he was like, he was like, I cause I sent him a message. I was like, this Pittsburgh game better be awesome. Or I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I can't get on board how everyone has them so high. And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. This stuff is so good. Yeah. And then I realized that that was the highlight tape, right? Yeah. And so when you get in deeper into the games, it's, it's, He's not as consistent as you would like him to be with some of the things that he does well. It, to me, it seems like he just wants to bounce outside. He he loves to bounce it. And, and when I, to me, when he's at his best is when he plants a foot and goes north. Agreed. Because Agreed. he's twitchy and rubber band snappy. Like when he gets up field and goes north and south, it looks really good. And there's a lot of those runs you can point to and say, I really like yeah. that. But then there's a lot of runs where they're a loss or they're just strung out to as far as he can go very often. even yeah. and, and, and he's successful at it. He's w- been the best at what he does for a long time in his career throughout high school and all that. So him, them boys have success bouncing it. So I kind of get it. I would say that Sanders had less negative runs than Barkley did in his career. Now, I don't know if that's a function of the offensive line improving, but I thought on a very, very large portion of Sanders' runs that he was falling forward on a large portion of them. I, He's I, definitely I, more I of agree. a fall I think forward he, guy. I think he falls forward. I, I, I would agree disagree with that. With that. I, I would, I would in- agree with you. I One of my things, one of my bullet points here is inconsistent for me, and I agree with you. I think the best stuff that he has on tape is when he does decide to put that foot in the ground and, and get up. I think one of his best attributes, though, is the lateral agility. Is He just seems very fluid and, and springy, I guess would be a word for him. Some people kind of knock the quote-unquote explosion that he has, but I, I don't... Is it organic? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's... Inorganic, organic, I don't care what... I don't, I don't think it's terrible. Is, I don't think it's free range. Off the, off the charts, but some people were also knocking the long speed, and then they saw this combine testing, and uh, you know I don't know if if the you know that those two things don't always coincide with each other either. Like you could run fast with nobody around you, and then your game speed maybe isn't quite as fast. Like I don't think Justice Hill is as fast as he ran in his forty nah, when he's on the field, I don't and know about so, that. sometimes 
Miles Sanders doesn't look as fast as maybe he tested, but other t- like he looks really athletic on the field. Um, so I, I agree with you. I think the bouncing uh, is is a little bit of something that I didn't like. like. Marlon um, Mack 2.0. Maybe? Marlon Mack ish. He does definitely circa 2017. To me, he definitely likes to press up to the line and keep stringing it outside. And I think what you mentioned partially of being the number one running back in the nation coming out and it's worked for him for so long and he's consistently been one of the more athletic players on the field and if it keeps working for you why would you really do anything different at the next level probably going to be a little bit harder to do we've seen marlon mack kind of change a little bit and it's it's you know it's worked for him i don't think any of these running backs are going to come in here and say you know i was saying maybe he should stay another year i don't think any of these running backs are really going to come in here and blow the doors off of their first year so you know he'll he'll have a year to to go somewhere and and develop and and get some run but I, like i said I don't, I don't know if any of these guys are getting on the field and getting crack at being the one a to really anything with a lot of one b's and twos i think coming out here and and sanders i think has a good chance to be a solid one b for a team well one of the things that i does scare me a little bit about him his ability to get on the field is like I kind of disagree with you, man. I don't know that he's that good at, at pass protection. I feel like there are some really good blocks in there where you can point and say, "Oh, that I like that." Got after it, but then there's a lot of whiffs. There's a lot of missed assignments, and I think he has trouble sustaining like his initial block. Well, before you rebuttal, I'll say that I feel like pretty much every back in this class, like you can find some good stuff and some bad stuff. I would I would say he's below average. So yeah, you, you think I would disagree you, th- with you think that. he's on the lower I think end? He's of on the, the lower end of the and, and you, both good and bad. No, Christian I, Hackenberg, you disagree. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see some bad run blocking, you turn on Travis Homer against Florida State, and you will be on the floor <laughs> laughing about how atrocious this guy's run blocking is. And I saw people just pass say, blocking, pass blocking, pass blocking, run blocking, any sort of blocking this guy's doing. I don't care if he's blocking. I don't know what he's if he, if he's blocking you in 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 sorry I don't care his blocking is bad, but Sanders his 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 technique could probably use a little bit of refinement. He does a little too much of the shoulder blocking. He doesn't square guys up enough, even for my taste. Yeah, but that also has to do with reps. I mean, this guy just wasn't getting the reps <clears throat> before this year. He just wasn't getting them. He it's fair. He didn't. Ha- I mean, I mean, what was his highest carry total before this year? Probably like twenty five. I mean, he just wasn't getting carries. His biggest game before the 2018... 31 and was, 17. was 2018. 25 and, and 16. Yeah, and the biggest game he had was the Washington game when Barkley was playing half the game because he knew he was coming out. Mm-hmm. So, Or he was playing at garbage time. But I think the bouncing thing is, is something that I saw as well, too. He was definitely bouncing more at the second level than the first level. But that's even something Barkley was doing at Penn State. It's because of the lack of the lack of the confidence in the line, and and I think that's something. And, the, and I think the plus of the athletic ability. From yes, the, from exactly. Both of them. He trusts athletic ability. He's going to try and bounce it outside, but he's going to get a running back coach and was like, "Look, Miles, you need to run the ball, and you need to trust your offensive line." And I think he will do that in the NFL because he'll have superior talent than he was used to at Penn State because those boys at Penn State were not. Are, it's not it's not it i mean yeah their left tackle left ear early i don't know why he's not going to get drafted and if he does get drafted he's going to be drafted as a guard their guard that's coming out he'll get drafted probably in the third round um but other than that it's just a bunch of nobodies on the offensive line so um like you said he was trusting his athleticism and he had every right to do that because he was the number one running back who coming into college exactly it's um, it's what he did best all right so I think some of the other knocks for some people out there and me as well, that there are games where maybe he was against some of the more elite competition in the Big Ten and, and maybe didn't uh, quite fare as well outside of Michigan State and, and I guess Wisconsin. I think they're in the 50 range, but Michigan State is, I think, the best running defense if you go by kind of yards per game allowed, um, and he blew them up. Uh, in 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 their matchup, and you know, I think it was a couple of big plays. Yeah, that definitely got him to a couple of big was. plays. Exactly. Um, but w- what do you think about like you know not not faring well against Michigan and a couple of the other bigger schools? I know they were getting their ass kicked. Yeah, in the Michigan. Michigan game. I mean, they were getting handed yeah. against Michigan. There the was stat box looks bad, but I, like you watch that game, I can't really be mad at him. Yeah, like, I mean, I wrote two things down in the Michigan game, and it's one he picked up blitzers well, and two is that the Penn State's offensive line just got absolutely manhandled. I mean, yeah. Winovich and Gary were just killing them all game. Winovich. All game. Love, love watching some Winovich. All game. So Strong name. Chase, um, and his first name is Chase. Yeah. Chase Winovich. Quality Ohio name. Ohio State 
not a great game. Uh, but six, McSorley 16 had, for 43 in that game. McSorley had a huge game. He w- he was definitely the one killing them on the ground in the in the Ohio State game. And Ohio State, another top. They probably had the second best defensive line in all of college football. So, um, was, yes. Uh, was Bosa a, still? Bosa was out. Bosa was out point. that game, but Chase Young had a breakout game during that game. And they got a couple boys in there that can, that can definitely play football. Um so I mean the, the yes. Rutgers game he had 27 attempts for 88 yards that's like 3.3 a carry so volume and ended up having a decent game but so was a little inconsistent throughout the year had some had some really good games I'm not trying to take anything no, away from agree. him just, no, just going through some some of these box scores and I mean the last game of the year under you know 51 yards against Kentucky eh, could have been kind of foot out the door I think that was definitely it I think he didn't declare until after the Kentucky game, but I think he definitely knew what he was doing because uh, Franklin definitely played more Ricky Slade in that game. He was the backup to Sanders. Mm-hmm. He definitely played more Ricky Slade than he did in the previous games. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if that was due to health because of um, obviously they had four weeks off between the their last game and the bowl game, but um, Ricky Slade definitely got more run in that game, similar similarly to as Sanders did the year before in the Barclays last game. And one of the last questions here before we get to kind of where we where we have all these guys falling in in this class of running backs here, I I, I can't. Can somebody one of y'all maybe maybe the Penn State guy here could what what's with all the hate in the passing game with this guy? Like when I see him play in the passing game, I see a guy who kind of lined up all over the field. He's got snaps from all different positions. Maybe not the best route runner, and maybe wasn't like smoking people while he was running the routes but every time he caught the ball it was typical i don't know what the drops were i can't find that number but i only saw one i only saw one too every I saw one every time he caught the ball I, I thought he did a good job of getting his head back up field it's usually a pretty handsy catch it's not he doesn't let it get on him like it gets his eyes back to the quarterback right. quickly yeah. so yeah. so what i don't i don't understand some, some people really have that as a knock because uh, what, what what is it what's the problem it, it's nothing it's people i thought it, i think that could be the best thing that translates next year that that gets him on the field scoring you fantasy points is exactly. it because if you get this guy 54? in space exactly that's what it is it's because some it's because people see saquon bark got 54 passes it Miles Sanders is not Saquon Barkley. That that's that's the number one thing you have to know about Sanders is he's not Barkley. And here's the thing: no one is Saquon Barkley. No one. He's he's one of a kind. And do you think he had that in his head a little bit this yes, year? Yes, he certainly did because you yeah, saw. They even asked him about it in interviews. Like, are you tired of talking about Saquon? He's like, yeah. I mean, what? Am, I, everybody wants to talk about Saquon, but I just got to do me. I mean, his first carry, first carry of the season against App State. First carry hurdle. He tries to hurdle a guy. And what is Saquon known for? He's known for hurdling. Right. So he's trying to be Barkley too much. And I think once he gets out of the Barkley shadow and he gets drafted by an NFL team, he'll get out of that shadow. And I think I think we haven't seen the best of Miles Sanders yet. I really believe that. No, I, I, I agree. And that's one. Of, that's kind of why I was talking about. I wish he would maybe come back because I do think my thing with Sanders is I think he's a really good athlete playing football. I'm, I'm not sure he's quite as good of an athlete playing the running back position. Like he hasn't quite learned exactly how he needs to play the running back positions to really blossom all of his good traits. I would disagree with that because that twitchiness, you just you just can't find that. Right. I'm not saying that he doesn't have good traits. I'm just saying that he hasn't that's really related hasn't to really honed it field, hasn't you know? really honed it in to be a great running back week in, week out. And some of it could just be reps, especially against good competition. Like it's one thing to do it in high school, but then to only have one season really on your resume uh, going into the pros, I think he's got all the parts and pieces. I just think he needs to refine his game a little bit. Yeah, and I think you can say that about pretty much any back. In sure, class. They, uh, they need 100%. refinement. They need refinement. One hundred percent. I'm I'm down with with the passing game of of Saquon. I think it's or over Miles Sanders. Yeah, exactly. You just said it right there. I yeah. think it's I think it's overblown. It's definitely overblown. It's it's just something that yeah I mean like you were I cut you off. He was when you get him in space and right and especially like a quick out you know he's like out to the sideline which is where he likes to be and he does really good work up there usually gets up field yeah quickly i think he's i think he is a little bit better of an inside zone runner than an outside zone runner right now um but i think that could change because i think he does have a little bit of the tools to to do all of that um so just another little bullet point that i had left over i would say his definitely his best runs are probably off tackle 
Yeah, you like the off tackle stuff. Yeah, I think I like a little bit more inside for for my personal taste. I don't think he needs to get super far out wide, but when he's running between the guard and the tackle and the right off tackle, I think those are his best runs where he can kind of figure what the linebackers doing there and he can make his decision what he wants to do there. I think sometimes when he runs up the middle, and yes, I'll agree with you guys a little bit, he does get a bit bouncy at times. But like you said, I think that's him just trying to trust his natural athleticism and he thinks he's more athletic. And and to be honest with you, he probably is more athletic than most of the, most of the guys that he's playing against. Right. But he's not going to see the NFL where right. you got linebackers running 4-4. Sure. And, I mean, most of the linebackers are on Chase Wimbush's level. Let's get... I'm just kidding. I hate I hate Michigan. I'm just I don't know why I'm plugging Chase Winovich. Winovich, sorry. Oh, I, went, Bush. I went Winbush. I went Winbush. Who the hell is that? Winovich. You talking about the quarterback from Notre Dame? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, originally a Penn State, uh, originally a Penn State recruit, by the way. Uh, one more thing for Miles Sanders that might help him see some some playing time is he he can you can throw him in there on the kick return mm. game, average over 20 yards a yes. return and 16. Yes, good, I good totally aspect agree with of the that. game that maybe an NFL team will use and get him suited up anyway. Good ending point on Jay the, Wayne there with some solid on, stats on the overall uh, profile of what Miles Sanders does. And I love a running back who plays on kickoff returns because that means they have the vision to be able to to be able to manage through the field. So yeah. I think that's a, definitely a plus on running backs. And the ability to, returns. to take it a long ways. Exactly. I don't, the, I don't, the, and juke a bunch of dudes. I, yep. I think I don't think the vision's uh, really much of an issue for. For Saquon nope. or uh, Miles Sanders. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's two there, Jimmy. That's, that is two. I'll drink. Check out the article on the FF Dynasty called He's No Saquon. By uh, um, Matt Bowers? Yeah, Michael, ba- Michael. Michael. Michael Bauer. Yeah. Do you have the Twitter handle? At, oh, man. All right. Well, you effort, and I'll get into the uh, ADP 